part of the reason that I've been so busy lately is, and I promise for anyone who's thinking that this is a publicity stunt or whatever, I assure you that it's not a publicity stunt, that I really have been struggling with depression. And also, I figure trying to adjust myself here. Anyway, so now that I'm more centered, I can talk about these things. And as I said, I've just been really struggling with depression and I'm not kidding, I was suicidal on Halloween, and I just broke down, I, you know, part of the problem is that, part of the problem is that I even tried to, for lack of a better term, I even tried to fake that I was watching YouTube videos and crying over those, and I just couldn't make it, I broke down and said, look, I'm suicidal, and so this isn't just, you know, this really isn't just bullshit that I struggle with. I know that others struggle with this too, and that's part of why I share the pain. And I've learned the lessons from my family. In fact, because my family didn't talk about it, in fact, because my family tried to pull themselves up by the bootstraps and continue to be quote-unquote strong, there were, there were several suicide attempts. And, let's see, one, two, three, four... Four of them succeeded. Four of them succeeded. And two of them are on my direct line. So people say, oh, this is just a joke, or oh, you're not being an adult by talking about all this, or whatever it is. But you know what? And that's part of the problem, too. And I responded to a blog entry last night, and I'll read you part of what I wrote, because I feel that this is very important. This one woman does not understand abuse at all. And as I said, God forbid that she's abusing her kids. Because if she is, I hope that social services gets involved. Or someone gets involved so quickly, it won't even be funny. Here's what she wrote. She said, and I quote, Where's it? Let's see. There was a time, not too long ago, when bullying was defined as slamming someone up against the locker and stealing their lunch money. There was a time when kids got called names and got picked on, and they brushed it off and worked through it. Ask me how I know this. Now, if Sally calls Susie a bitch, please excuse my language if, that's offend, if that offends you. Susie's whole world crumbles around her. She contemplates suicide, and this society encourages her to feel like her world is truly ended, and she should be entitled to a worldwide pity party. And Sally, phew, she should be jailed. She should be thrown in juvenile detention for acting like... <gasps> A teenager acts. The problem is, many of those kids who were verbally abused back then did end up committing suicide or did end up hurting others. I can tell you that my great-granddad was one of those kids who became an adult, went into his 60s, had verbally abused others himself because, as the old saying goes, hurt people hurt people, and he committed suicide. And if you look on my, actually, if you look on Ancestry.com, since unfortunately they won't show living people on my family tree, if you look at a picture of my granddad, you can see that he's not smiling at all, and he was very abused as a child. And even my great uncle Tony once said this when I made a comment about Pop Pop, in terms of great granddad and dad and what have you, he said, and he quoted the old saying, like father, like son. So, as I said to Mrs. Betts, who clearly doesn't understand the darn about verbal abuse, or I hope that she doesn't, because if she does, I want those kids taken away from her. Verbal abuse leaves intangible internal scars. Verbal abuse is a form of emotional and mental abuse. Verbal abuse can lead to physical abuse. Verbal abuse can lead to Susie's of this world into committing suicide. In her words, ask me how I know this. And God forbid, as I said, God forbid that she should ever have to ask her kids or find out. And my mom has had to deal with quite a bit of it because I broke down on Halloween and just couldn't take it anymore. And, she, and she's dealt with the fallout several other times. And she's pretty much the only one who's been dealing with it. Yes, there are people praying for me. Yes, there are people doing this and this and this. But when no one wants to hear about my problems or when no one wants to deal with what I'm going through or you know, and just because others are going through pain 
doesn't take my pain away. God gives in proportion, and it says in somewhere, it says he's given each a measure of faith. And in the same way, it also says to whom much is given, much is expected. So basically, whatever, ge whatever he gives is whatever is expected. And here's what it says in Romans 12.3. For I say through the grace given to me to everybody who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. And in the same way God has dealt a measure of whatever else. And, you know, I'm thinking too that maybe if I share my suffering, others are going to come forward and say, hey, I'm suffering with this too. Hey, I'm not alone. Hey, yes, your pain isn't taken away. But guess what? Neither is mine. And as I said, for those who didn't talk about it, there were suicide attempts. And four succeeded. And I can tell you one that did not succeed recently has left this person. She was in the hospital for three months, is now in a wheelchair, and has memory lapses. And we didn't even know that she was thinking about contemplating suicide. I'd love to see the note because, despite what anyone says, I very much think that I was a part of it. And again, I'd love to see the note. I'm not going to know unless I see the note. And a lot of times, too, a lot of times, too, people won't tell the people who have affected them to commit suicide until they read the note. So, for example, if, God forbid, I were to commit suicide, I may not tell, let's say I had something against Mom Michelle, and I may not tell them, and then I would write in the notes something like, da 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 do you see what you did to me now? I couldn't tell you then, and now I'm going to tell you. And so, a lot of times, unless, even too, unless you've lived a reality, you can't understand it, but you can sure try to help people as much as possible. And obviously, just because others are going through pain doesn't take your pain away. And the converse, just because you're going through pain doesn't take others' pain away. And if you don't talk about pain, how else is anyone else going to want to talk about their pain? Because on one hand, if you talk about your pain, people are going to shut up about theirs because they're going to feel like, oh, man, this person's really suffering. But on the other hand, on the other hand, people will be like, hey, that's me too. I'm really suffering through pain. And someone got real nasty. And, and this guy's a nasty person anyway. But he got real nasty this morning. And he said to me, and I'm trying to read the quote here because I'm lucky I saved it in my email before I deleted it and banned the guy off of my page completely because he's just, unfortunately, a very nasty person. Here's what he wrote. He said, when someone is threatening suicide on a public forum, their parents or a family member should be notified. Well, I wasn't threatening suicide, so he's not telling the truth. I said that I had been suicidal and that I was on the verge of it again and that, for whatever reason, God pulled me off of the verge of suicide. So the guy wasn't telling the truth. He also said, try to see if I can find it. Okay, I just deleted that one. Okay. Um... Okay, here's the other comment he wrote. He said, when I was asking if I was right to turn someone down, because I told him, you know, some of the stuff that I have and all that, he said, you were right to turn him or anyone else down at this time. You are not ready for an adult relationship. And then that's when I realized, besides that this guy is nasty anyway, because he has a nasty picture, perhaps photoshopped, of a child peeing on a politician. The... But like I said, besides that the guy's nasty, I realize that the people who are adults will be up front. People who are adults will talk about their issues. And I can tell you that's exactly what a person told me on one of my questions. And by the way, I'm seeing some of these ads on Soda Head. Some of them are just really, really nasty. And... Anyway, that's a whole other discussion, though. Sometimes I get distracted because of my ADD. Anyway, so one person told me, he said, he said, telling someone 
it's not you, it's me, in the way you have doesn't seem disingenuous, because I did tell him. The stuff at the end about the OCD and ADD and IBS, you could probably leave off unless they didn't get the message beforehand. And this guy has told me in the past before that he's cared about me, and I've been very candid with him and other people about what I struggle with. Let's see, plus some guys may decide that they want to quote-unquote save you or something like that. Well, let me tell you that what I had said no in the past, that did not work out. And since the guy was pursuing me, not this guy, but another guy, I finally said, okay, and I gave it a chance, and it didn't work out. And I'll be honest, I, I'm lucky I wasn't murdered by this guy, because to make a long story short, this guy, the, the last guy I had dated, had claimed that he had been raped by his girlfriend. And to make a longer story short, when you can figure out what, what he was really like, you can guess who probably raped who. And... Because <sighs> I had to call the police on him, I'll put it that way. And I didn't have to call the police on him for anything sexual, by the way, but I had to call the police on him for harassment and all that. But, you know, that's a whole other discussion, but... And, and, you know, I've also given other people that fair warning about that guy when I needed to give the fair warning. I'm not going to name names, because unfortunately I could be sued, because, hey, apparently telling the truth and giving warnings about people can get you sued for a libel and slander and defamation. But anyway, so here's what I, and then he also, and then I explained, not, not to the guy I was dating, by the way, but to this guy who responded to my question on Soda Head. I explained to him my whole story, well, not my whole story, but about the, you know, um, yeah, well, you can see the comments. I'll, I'll put the link in the question, or the, the link in the description. So he said to me, too, it sounds to me like you're not necessarily turning them down. It's more like a warning. Yep. Something like, hey, I'm a very complicated person who has an extremely complicated family. That's an understatement. Are you sure you know what you're getting yourself into? That's pretty, you know, does he know what he's getting himself into sort of thing. Sounds like you haven't taken yourself off in the market. You darn right I haven't. You just want to put those caveats out there so there are no surprises or guys jumping ship or anything like that. Like, you just want to be up front because I'm trying to make it through. I'm sorry, guys. Because maybe you have fears that they will leave once they find out how difficult it can be with your family. I didn't say this to him, but I was also thinking, or or how they can be so much like my family. I mean, even... <sighs> I'll, I'll just put it that way. And so I said to him, absolutely, and with the conditions that I have. As I said... I'm at least letting a guy know what he be getting into before he gets into it. Doesn't caring about someone in any way spare unnecessary and burdensome sacrifice. And trust me, plenty of guys would jump ship really quickly. And I even said that to him um, in my other comment. I said, let's see. Also, I have heard the horror stories about guys leaving women over conditions such as breast cancer, multiple sclerosis. This did happen to a friend's mom, and that's a long story, unfortunately. Having a child who is mentally disabled, and this happened to a woman at my former church. Her son has autism, and the guy thought, hey, it's, it's okay, the kid has autism, I'll just go ahead and leave and live my own life, basically. That was really, that was really the crux of it, him not wanting to be a man. Because, hey, when his other two kids for lack of a better term, came out typical. He was okay with that, but boy, when the third kid came along and had autism, he couldn't handle it, and there were apparently other issues. He decided to cheat. And so I'm saying, okay, if people are leaving people over breast cancer, multiple sclerosis, um, having kids who are mentally disabled, or being disabled themselves, then I want to 
let people frankly know what they're facing, frankly know what they're up against, and it isn't me just being, you know, a bitch or a jerk or an immature adult, it's saying, hey, I know that I can be a bit of a red flag within itself. And so I don't just talk about this shit because, oh, I'm just talking about it or doing theatrics like my mom claims or wanting to get attention or other stuff. I want to talk about my pain before, God forbid, I take the route that some of my relatives took and I know that other people are going through pain too. So I want them to maybe come forward and say, hey, you know what, I'm suffering with pain too. And just because I have pain doesn't take yours away, but the converse, just because you have pain doesn't take mine away. So that's really what's been going on lately. And by the way, too, I also want to link to a brain with depression. Actually, I'm going to link to a couple of things, a brain with depression, a brain with OCD anxiety, and a brain with ADD. And then you'll see what I have. So let's see, ADD, OCD, anxiety, and depression... And then irritable bowel syndrome and cerebral palsy. Well, I, I guess I could... I wish my mom would let me publish the pictures of my MRI before I had to go in for the back pin pump surgery because I haven't even seen those yet. And I'd like to see those, and I'd like to show people what a... for lack of a better term, what a brain with cerebral palsy looks like. And... Because cerebral palsy usually comes in through a brain bleed or some other neuro issue.